The clear coat on the forks is dry, and man, it feels and looks awesome. What's up everybody, I'm John. I'm Isaac, and today on Cars and Cameras, we are working on my 1985 Honda ATC 70. We recently installed a high output Piranha 140cc engine on it, and this thing rips. But now it's time to give it the TLC it deserves. I have a slew of all new parts, both cosmetic and functional, that we're gonna be using to uh, really spruce up this ATC 70, including brand new plastics, which are probably the shiniest things we've ever had possession of. I'm gonna have to hit it with some sandpaper to dull it <laughs> up some. Absolutely. We have uh, new reproduction stickers, I got new brakes, a new uh, air intake, a new seat cover, new bearings, and a couple other odds and ends to make this thing a whole lot better. Uh, and as of about three days ago, the fuel tank sprung a leak, so we're gonna have to do our good old fashioned fuel tank repair job to it that we've been doing to all our old Hondas and uh, take it for a ride. Old Ronda. Is Ronda dripping in two places or is it just... It's just running down. Oh, okay. I tell you, man. This thing had a great five miles in it. Oh, wow. This is a bottle getting a little full. Old plastic. So this frame, we're gonna clean it up and it could use some paint, so we're going to use our uh, favorite Pour 15 to uh, go ahead and just touch up the areas that are rusty. <laughs> What's that look on your face, bud? You're relieving yourself? All of a sudden, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> we need a Gatorade bottle stack. Well, there's still oh, a lot of gosh. fuel in here. We're gonna need a third Gatorade bottle. Really? There's a lot of fuel in here. Oh, wow, okay. So if you remember on our last episode when we put the 140 on this ATC 70, you may remember we had to completely rig the intake manifold to get the carburetor to clear the fuel tank. I went online and ordered this clever looking adjustable uh, three hole intake. Six hole. Six hole intake, thank you. <laughs> it's probably not gonna work. Yeah, no. Nah. I don't think it will either. Okay. So I'm working on breaking this three-wheeler down so I can replace some bearings. I'm going to replace the chain tensioner with an aftermarket unit. It looked pretty interesting. And uh, then I need to clean up the frame and get it ready to paint. Go Power Sports just sent us their new Go Power Pit, which is an outdoor portable fire and cooking pit for camping. They sent us one and we go on a little bit of a camping cooking adventure. So be sure to stay tuned to the end of the episode to check that out. So I took some photos of where the original stickers are on the chassis. My new sticker pack comes with pretty much everything, including all the warnings and the engine specs and all that stuff. So I'm gonna razor blade the old ones off uh, and then I'm gonna give it one more degrease with some brake clean, and then I'm gonna start painting. Just think, the person who put that on there in 1985. It's probably retired. They're probably waking up from a nightmare of someone pulling the sticker off of their three-wheeler. <laughs> they have a nightmare every time someone pulls a sticker off a three-wheeler. They have a lot of nightmares. Gasket blew out. Holy cow. This was in the exhaust. What? Wow, dude. I've never seen that before. No. It like it like blew out and it went inside the pipe just like this. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. a first.
All right, it's pretty much all scuffed up. Now I can wipe it down one more time, and then I can start painting. What you got there? I thought it was a snack, just by the sound of it. Are you, are you hungry? I was getting hungry. <laughs> I just ate. Here you go, buddy. Oh, thanks, man. What? How long has this been in your pocket? A week. Oh, okay. There is a going to be an O-ring between the split rims. That's oh, what, wow. That's what that is going to be right there. Interesting. There's okay. going to be a rubber O-ring in there. Gotcha. Now, I've never had one of these apart, but that only makes sense right there. Right, right. That there's an O-ring in there. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Now, don't let her tip over. Yeah, that would be so bad. Long drop. Bad news. Christmas special uh, Z50s. Yeah, yeah. That was the chrome tank ones. Yeah. What if I don't know if they ever did a uh, ATC 70, but wouldn't it be awesome if you did one for ATC 70, all like a chrome. Christmas special? That'd be cool. That'd be very cool. I don't think it's all chrome, but it'd be like chrome tank. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mwah. Hi, buddy. How's it going? Oh, just fine. How's that going? Oh, pretty good. If it were mine, I'd just be clear coating these things. I mean, they're not bad. Uh, okay, that's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I did not know that that plastic, someone had cut the, across the whole back of it. I saw the new plastics and I was like, he got the wrong plastics. See how the back is straight across? Right here? Yeah. Yeah. And the new one isn't. Okay. So I thought that you had bought the wrong plastic. Tricky. Oh. And the seat is separated. Look at that. Oh yeah. Hey man, is that a spacer? Right here? Yeah. What where did that come from? I don't know. Back right uh -oh. here. This is, uh, I think it goes right there. All right. That seat looks in pretty good shape apart from that rip in the uh, vinyl. Yeah, that's why I just bought a, uh, a seat cover. If it, is it me or is that Honda a little bit crooked? Like turn it around and sit on the ground. This one? Yeah. It looks crooked. It looks crooked. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah. I'm guessing it's the original seat. I'm pretty sure that's the original seat. That's got to be the original seat. Yeah. So I'm going to remove this old seat cover, clean this seat pan up, maybe give it a little bit of paint, and put my new one on. Moment of silence, please. For the uh, original equipment? Yeah. Yeah. Silence. OK. Ow. It's fighting back. They say, I, I don't know if I trust it or not, but you can uh, like heat them up like till they turn colors. Yeah. And they become soft again. And you can like reuse it without worrying about breaking them, but. Yeah, they're we bad. Don't have a, we don't have a torch or anything. So I would rather you not bend them and we just kind of stretch the material as good as we can and like hook it. Oh, dude, they're trash. Even without me poking them, they're pretty trash. Really? Yeah. It's a little rough, man. The seat pan? Yeah. Like another five years, and this thing would be toast. Do they offer seat pans? I'm not sure. I didn't look. Okay. Well, that one doesn't... I mean, it's still there. Yeah. What is... Alright, the 
foam looks pretty decent. It's not bad. Is it wet at all? Does not appear to be wet. Good. You don't want to cover it up while it's wet. Yeah. Paint. Nice. I think we ought to leave the tape on it. Instead of white walls, it'll be blue walls. Blue walls? Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's where the noises were coming from. So just chain being not tensioned well enough or something. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And the tire. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Can you, can you move your... Yeah. Thanks. Hmm. All right, cool. Awesome. Here you go. Man! I got new seals and new wheel bearings. Unless those feel good. It needs new wheel bearings. This one's definitely... Both of them. Two wheel bearings? Two wheel bearings. You got it. Man, if you were to paint those two items. Yeah. Same color as the gas tank. Yeah. It would give it some pop. Red? Yeah. Okay. But, I mean, it wouldn't be like original. You own original. I think I'm going to paint them black, man. I think I'm going to paint them black. Good thing. I don't know if I really want to like draw attention to like the underskirt of the. It might look clownish. Today. Yeah, I look a little weird. Yeah. No, it's like painting control arms a different color. I mean, who does that? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Man. Yeah. These new bearings. Yeah. Are sealed. That's good, right? Yeah. These old bearings, not sealed. Not sealed. Not sealed. Huh. So, they your bearings are going to be double sealed. So, <laughs> they're in there. They're sealed. Bearings. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I'm just going to walk. Before putting the other bearing in, I have to put this spacer in. Okay. I wiped it off. It passes. All right, good. Installing the other bearing. We are good. Seal. Hey, John? Yes. Your bearings are done, sir. Oh, sweet. Looks good. Now we just got to tape them up no, and scuff them up. Scuff up the uh, rim and tape it up. And I ordered new tires. They're just not here yet. So we might be rolling with these bad boys. Blah, 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 blah. There's nothing wrong with them, man. I don't even see any wear. Uh, it's just the dry, the dry rot. They weren't dry rot. Actually, I don't see anywhere on this. Look, it's still got the little uh, designs in there and stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, they're relatively new. It just, the dry rot is horrible. Yeah. Look how shiny that is. Very shiny. That is like, dude, I'm, I'm just lining them up to compare. Oh, they're definitely different. Definitely different. First off, you know back in 1985, it didn't come with this sticker. There's no way. I want to know if it did. But you got this line here that oh, isn't there. Oh, yeah. I bet you it looks to me like this opening is wider than that opening. Oh, no. What, what you're missing is the brace. This brace. Oh, look at that. That's why it looks uh, wider. Yeah, I melted my exhaust on this plastic, or I melted the plastic on my exhaust on that. I'm hoping that this is more bulged out, but I don't know. Let's take a look at the back. Oh, you're right, they did modify the original plastic. Mm -hmm. That looks really cool. That looks like, 
looks like the rear end of a Dodge Charger, a modern yeah. Dodge Charger. I just hope that the exhaust won't be an issue coming out the back there. Yeah, that's true. We can yeah. always trim it. It's not the original plastic, so we can always trim a little exhaust. That's true. Man, this thing is going to look good. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Awesome. Yeah, our uh, ATC paint has had time to dry. Looking pretty good. Uh, I like how the uh, brush strokes have kind of evened out. Uh, so uh, we're working on seat today. That's right, man. So we have a still a list of things to do before we can start reassembly. We need to. We added touch-up paint on these forks, but the forks still need to be clear coated. I need to de-sticker and then re-sticker the fuel tank, and yep. we need to seal it up. It's over and there. It's drying out because, uh, well, we washed out the rust, got all the loose rust out of it. Yep. So we can seal the tank. Exactly. And then uh, we need to seal the tank this evening as well. Yes. We'll do that. Sounds good. Well, let's get started on the seat. All right, man. Let's do it. What's the strategy for recovering a seat like that? I don't know. Do oh. I look like an expert? It's not your first rodeo. No, it's not. Um, in the past, what I've done is carefully place it on there. It's going to take a lot of work in it. You know, little tug here, little tug here, come back here, readjust, a lot of adjusting and stuff. Because you don't want any wrinkles or anything like that. You don't want the foam to be bunching up. I want this seam right in the center. And if it doesn't look right, I'm going to just say it's factory. Because remember, the, the Honda wasn't even centered on your seat to begin with. That's true. <laughs> So once we have this thing stretched into position, we have these, these teeth right here that are very fragile. And my idea is I'm going to get an X-Acto knife and I'm going to get it close to the hook and I'm going to go ahead and just pre-poke a hole in the vinyl so I can kind of slip it on because I don't want to... Uh, these teeth will only handle so many bends before they break off. So I don't want to do any more bending on them. So Sounds good. And while Ike does that, I'm going to go ahead and detape the wheels and get them ready to mount on the bike. So I've done a controversial thing, and that is uh, de-sticker it. I would have never done it. You know, yeah, I know. I, I like the stickers. The ones that were on there, they had really cool patina, man. But but you're not going with, for patina on this one. No. I mean, I'm putting brand new plastics on it. I'm painting up the chassis. I, I think it's got to match or else it's going to look out like, a, like a, a sore thumb. I agree with you. So, you know, for better or for worse, that's what we're doing. Ike's helping me out here by de-gluing it and uh, we're gonna hit these forks with some paint and call it quits for the evening oh yeah it looks good with some clear coat on it I'll say that oh yeah look at that man that looks way better Does it? it just brings the color out of the red you know I think that paint stinks <laughs> I think you are correct Clear coat has been applied to the forks. They look great. It made the red pop again. Uh, we're gonna let the fuel tank, it's still not dry from our cleaning treatment we did, so we're gonna leave it on the heater overnight. Come back in the morning and we're gonna seal it. Good morning, everybody. It's about time to start assembly. Ike is still working on pulling the old adhesive off the fuel tank. He's got a couple tips and tricks for you guys too. But uh, the clear coat on the forks is dry, and man, it feels and looks 
awesome. So I'm gonna start assembly while Ike uh, continues to prep the fuel tank. Tech tip for people at home trying Tech to- Tech tip, well, we've got the sticker here. What's left of the sticker, it's just the glue that's left over. And I just take a little paper towel and spray a little bit of this brake clean <clears throat> to it and I just let it sit here and soak. Now, it's probably a good idea to whatever can of brake clean you're using, if you go to like the bottom part of the tank and you spray it there and you make sure it doesn't have a bad reaction to the paint. Good thinking. Yeah, in this case it doesn't affect the paint, but it sure does soften up the glue to the old sticker that was on here. So, I got her all soft and I'm using this razor blade to gently scrape the glue off, which I'd like to point out that I didn't put these gashes in here. That was already there. Yeah. From Seriously, I didn't do it. <laughs> but as you can see, it's pulling up the, the glue and it's real soft. And you want to remove it because it likes to roll up and reapply itself to the tank. <laughs> so when it, when it bunches up, take it off. It's looking pretty good. Check it out, dude. Uh, the seat cover looks great. Thanks for doing that. Uh -huh. And I installed it on the plastic. It looks really good. We can't permanently install it until the fuel tank is on, but something like that gives us an idea of what it's gonna look like. Awesome. Yeah, that's good, man. I need to remove that. That sticker right The sticker, there. yeah. And then apply the new stickers. Yeah. It looks really good. It's looking pretty sharp, dude. Yeah. Um, so you installed our new drum brake. Thanks for doing that. Not a problem. And you polished up and clear coated Are you... the, uh, these here. Yeah, just because they kind of show. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be behind a cover, the, uh, the drum brake. Yeah. Um, so I think we can go ahead and install this axle, right? Yes, sir. And then get working on the wheels, and then we're going to be waiting on fuel tank. Yes. Oh. I can't stand it any longer. Yeah, it's, I hear you. It's not period correct, man. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. Never ride as a passenger. Man, I would totally ride passenger on this thing. Did it have 150 pound capacity? And? No. Okay. Thought I'd grease the splines because we want them to last. We don't want them to stick. That's it. Awesome. Our ATC70 restoration is coming along really well. It looks great. It's clean enough. Awesome. Um, so I need to remove this plastic to go ahead and get the chain on with my new chain tensioner. Um, and then I can install the chain guard and uh, wheels. I can't be sure, but I can only assume that this becomes a common problem on these old ATCs. Your, uh, your chain tensioner sprocket begins to get shark finned and then you eventually lose teeth like this. There are a few aftermarket solutions, and they're all a little bit pricier than you'd think, but these guys run for like 100 bucks on eBay. So this was $65, comes with a uh, like a, some kind of synthetic bushing rather than a sprocket, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install it right in its factory position, and that's gonna be my new chain tensioner. I am about to add our 415 fuel tank sealer to this tank. Uh, you have to stir it up very well. You don't want any chunks in there. And
and uh, you want to make sure you plug off the fuel lines and any holes that are in the tank and uh, pour the contents into the tank. It says to pour the whole container into the tank, but I'm sure that's for autom you know, automotive fuel tanks. So I'm just gonna pour half of it in there. That'll be plenty. Make sure you plug off your fuel lines, guys. Yeah, I almost forgot. And you're basically gonna put a cap on it and roll it around for 30 minutes. Make sure that sealer gets everywhere. Chain tensioner's installed. Ike is working on putting the axle together. I can't, I gotta put that cover on first. Oh, that's right. Yep, that was the whole holdup, dude. Here you go, Chief. Thanks, bud. Looks so good. Really coming together, man. Huh. It's gotta be this. Is it that tensioner? I think it is. Well, I don't tell you that in the Amazon uh, description. <clears throat> Amazon, huh? Yeah. Does it need to be loosened? Is the bearing bad? It's, it's not tight. Dude. All right, looks like I'm redoing that. So we loosen the tensioner and it looks like it just makes that noise, which is really disappointing. Once I take the tensioner loose, it doesn't make the noise anymore. So it is the, indeed the tensioner. So, I just hope while we're riding, it's not. Maybe it'll break in, I don't know. I just hope that it's not making all that noise while riding it. Yeah, a little disappointing. Yeah, it is. Safety. This should be it. Yeah. You know, from a distance, you can't even tell that those forks are like, kind of jacked up. <laughs> yeah, man, I can't wait to see this thing with brand new tires on it. Yeah, I know, it's a bummer that we're putting these old ones on, but the new ones are gonna look fresh. So plastics and fuel tank. Plastics and fuel tank. So we need to make sure this plastic clears this exhaust. Yep, because the last piece of plastic kind of got a little bit melted. Just a little bit. But dang, it looks so good, man. Oh man, it, it clears it. Like, yeah. It's not even close. There. Sweet. Let's see about here. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's kind of close, but it's kind of close. Maybe we ought to wrap that spot with some header exhaust. Wrap. Uh, yeah, header wrap. That's a good idea. Yeah, dude. So, all right, we're still waiting on this fuel tank to dry, but I don't think that's going to stop us from scuffing it, applying stickers, and clear coating it. Clear coating it, and then applying stickers. We got good news and we got bad news. You bought an M3. That's the bad news. Man, that's the good news. <laughs> More on that later. All right, the bad news is that this fuel tank is not going to be dry for another four <clears throat> days. And it has a little hole in it, so this sticker is literally keeping the sealant from seeping out and creating another hole. So we can't paint this and apply new stickers for another four or five days. Yeah. So once it's dry, we can peel the sticker off, scuff up the uh, paint, hit it with some clear, and apply the stickers. Exactly. So we're going to be doing that at the same time we do the tires, which are also missing in action. But the good news is that we can apply all the other stickers right now. So there are a couple of ways you can go about stickers on these ATC 70s. They make a $35 kit that is like close but not perfect to original stuff and then you can get the hundred dollar sticker pack which is supposed to be more original and legitimate because this was a restoration and i'm still gonna use it i got the cheap kit because you know it's gonna work 
it'll fool everyone except for like the real nerds. It says four speed. Were were they originally four speed? I can't remember. Uh, but I I'm think it was honest. three speed. It doesn't really look like. It fits. Yeah, it doesn't. Maybe I shouldn't have got the thirty-five dollar kit. Well. Well, I mean, look, man, it doesn't look like it. Uh. I'm looking at it. Yeah, I'd I'd be curious to know what the expensive kit looked like compared to the cheap kit. Alright, let me get on the internet. Oh, we're getting on the internet. I don't think he's happy with his sticker choice. No. I'm glad I had that one sitting in my truck because your old, old one didn't have a sticker on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we actually got to look at stickers on the plastics. And you have a sticker right at the back underneath the seat that says no passengers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Oh, this is gonna be fun. This is the fun part. Man, should I put the camera down and we both? Yeah, we should both eyeball this. Okay. What do you think? I'd say just a hair more your way. What do you think? Looks like it. You want to start placing your side, and I'm gonna use the top body line. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna use. I want it to go just below, so I'm gonna have the paper make it to the right there you see yeah So that about wraps up our ATC 70 Rustoration Rusto mod. I'm pretty bummed the tires never made it in. And of course, we're still waiting on this fuel tank to dry. I think having the fuel tank uh, clear coated and re-stickered is going to make a huge difference in the overall look of the bike because it is kind of the central piece of the uh, of the three wheeler. But I think it looks great. I mean. We repainted the chassis, the wheels, we put new plastics on it. I mean, this clear coat on the forks just looks incredible. Uh, cleaned up all the plastic that we reused. Of course, the Piranha 140 is the heartbeat of this vehicle. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a real ripping machine. Thanks for tuning into this episode, everybody. Help us get to 1 million subscribers. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now. Uh, and leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. And if you are so inspired that you already leave us a thumbs up and you are already subscribed and you want to do more, go to our website, cars-cameras.com, and pick up one of our hats, one of our sticker packs, one of our hoodies, or one of our t-shirts, and you will help support us in our future projects. Uh, on Facebook, you can catch us at Cars and Cameras Reviews for sneak peeks. On Instagram, you can catch me at John underscore Cars and Cameras. And you can see all kinds of behind the scenes sneak peeks we're in the process of building a new shop, and I just had a new gravel driveway put up, put up and uh, all that content is on Instagram if you want the behind the scenes stuff. You can find Ike at Isaac It'll Be Fine on YouTube and Instagram. That's right, for everything he's doing, usually working on old cars that he bought for cheap. Yeah. I'm trying to be nice. Thanks. I was a little harsh in a recent video. Oh. But uh, it's all good. Anyway, beautiful specimens of history. <laughs> That's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Preserving nice. history. I don't know about preserving. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, oh, yeah. We need to uh, put together our Go Power pit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Go Power Sports sent us their brand new product. It, it doesn't have anything to do with go karts or mini bikes, but it's their Go Power pit. It is a portable assemble, disassemble, 
fire pit for camping. So honestly, you could strap it on the back of your go-kart, drive off into the woods, set it up, go catch a fish or like catch a squirrel and put it on the grill, cook it up, and eat it. So we're gonna be assembling our Go Power pit and we're gonna be cooking dinner on it. So stay tuned uh, right now. So uh, first first impressions, it's, uh, it's heavy. So it's not like you'd be carrying it on your uh, mini bike without a big heavy rack. So um, I feel like it's well gonna be well built because it's so heavy. Um, I don't know. I, what, what do you think this thing is? About uh, 40 pounds? I'd say so. I mean, the packaging is good though. Yes. Yes. You definitely put it on top of your Yurf dog or on the back. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. There we go. It's the grill top. That's pretty cool, man. All right. Now I'm curious on how this thing is going to be. Uh, they're trying. Is this thing. Is this thing shaped like an octagon? I think it is. One, right. two, this three, is four, five. No, it's a hexagon. Hexagon. It's a lot of cooking surface, man. Yeah, this thing's pretty big. All right. Interesting. All right, so we set the Go Power pit up for the first time outside, and we're going to throw some high heat paint on it, which is recommended. I think that's a good idea. Um, we're going to paint it and then disassemble it and show you guys how to put it together. So let's do it, man. What are we cooking on this thing, man? Man, what are we not cooking on this thing? That's, that's what I'm talking about. I say we go to the stream, dude. Catch ourselves a fish. Put it on the grill tonight. I hear you. Load up the ATC 200. Do a little, little backyard camping. All right, it's dinner time. Our Go Power pit is painted and dried. It's broken down. It's on the back of the ATC 200. Let's go cook some dinner, man. All right, we've arrived to our extremely secluded camping spot. It's a sweet camping spot. We're gonna make some dinner. We're gonna catch our own dinner? We're gonna catch our own dinner. All right. It's pretty simple. You got two halves. Each one has basically one and a half feet. And you have three in total. And there's where your briquettes are gonna go. So once you built your two halves, then you gotta put them together. Yep, they just go together and you put your three bolts in the center there. Yeah. And bam, you got, you got a pit. So I'm pretty sure this seam on the inside, they want you to go have it on the bottom, that lip, but I don't like to reach underneath to put the bolts in. So I put it in on top so I can put the bolts in. But again, I don't think there's any need for it since I mean, it's all held together and we're gonna be breaking this thing down in an hour and taking it back home. So I'm just kind of loosely putting this thing together and it's gonna be fine. Let's get the broquettes in it. Did I say it right? Oh yeah. All right, I guess we gotta catch some dinner, right? Yeah, man. All right, I watched Man vs. Wild religiously when I was a kid, so. I'm ready. I can't wait to see this. This evening on Piles and Cameras, we're catching wild salmon in the backyard. Usually for bait, I like to use a Visa card, but they really like American Express. So you go to the store, you put your credit card on the fishing pole, and you wait. Remember, patience is key. Oh, I think we've got something. Oh, mate. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's too heavy, mate. Oh, we got a, a family pack. Oh, this is going to be good eating, mate. Let's go ahead and skin it and throw it on the Go Power Pit. All right, as you can see, Isaac has camouflaged himself and he's waited for his prey to come to the watering hole. He's going to make his move any moment. Oh, mate, that's beautiful. Looks like we got a... Well, you got a 1.31 pounder there, mate. Oh yeah. That's good eating. I just love round patties. 
Let's fry them up. There we go. Looking amazing. This one's pretty good. I found a sizzle pan. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse you. Oh. Oh, this is like inappropriate. <laughs> Looking great, man. Oh, man. That's looking good. That's looking good. Bone appetite. Excellent. Bone apple tea, Look right? That. Perfect. Bone apple tea, that's right. Thanks for watching this episode, everybody. Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, you can find the Go Power Pit at a link in the description of this episode. I hope you enjoyed the cars and cameras uh, cooking expedition here at the end of this episode. Uh, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, help us get to a million. Uh, Cars-cameras.com for our merchandise, pick it up. And uh, Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews and Instagram at John underscore Cars and Cameras. I got. Oh, check me out at Isaac. It'll be fine. Like keep you on your toes. Like keep you on your toes. I was, I was uh, seeing that car drive by in the background, oh. <laughs> and I was just like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna do the dishes for you." All right? Oh, thanks, man. Not a problem, man. Look at that. It's even a dishwasher. Yeah. All right. Comes the smoke, and then comes the flame. Right. Oh, there it there is. There it is. Dishes are done, man. <laughs> All right, man, I'm not feeling just like, good. Just dude. like a. Oh my God. That was pretty good. <laughs>